So hello everybody, it's uh, Sunday the 30th of May, 2021, and we just thought we would do a little video showing what we're working on. So it's a holiday weekend, first of all it's a holiday weekend, and uh, Sunday and we're out in the shop working. So we just want to let everybody know that we're working very hard to fill orders, um, doing all we can. I know people are uh, lots of times uh, uh, excited to get their product and uh, you know we're working very hard to, to get them out the door. Um, we even have two employees here, and myself and Catherine working today. So we are working, working uh, really hard to get things done. Um, it's been a uh, real conscious goal of ours to decrease wait time, and we're eating into wait time right now. Um, at one point, it might have been three months to four months. Now it's probably eight to 10 weeks on average. And our goal by the end of the year is to completely uh, have our backlog uh, gone, caught up. So uh, just wanted to let you guys know about that and try to be as patient as you can. So one little focus of what we're doing today is we're getting stocks ready to ship. So, so after stocks come off the machine, the CNC machine, they're well finished. But there are a few things that need checked, adjusted, finished, etc. And it goes through a little bit of a a finishing process. And I just wanted to show you uh, what's involved, just because it's something we're working on today and I thought you might be interested. So the first thing you can see is the breech is rounded because the router bits don't do a good job of uh, making square corners. And that's just the nature of a bit. So we're going to go ahead and chisel that out. And we do this just because, uh, you know, we could leave it like this and, and have the, uh, the customer perform this task, but it can sometimes be a little tricky, and we, uh, we like to just get it taken care of. And in the process, we test fit the barrels to make sure they fit. So I'm just going to use a couple chisels and start squaring this up. This is a half inch chisel. This one is one of the Lee Nielsen chisels. It works pretty well. Cutting end grain can be a little, little difficult, especially on hard maple. And this chisel feels slightly, slightly dull, but not too bad, but we'll make it work. Okay. So that side is done. Okay, so that's squared up enough to test fit the barrel. So we're going to take a barrel and we're going to see if it fits in the inlet. It fits very well right off the machine. So you can take a look at the, the, the wood to metal fit. Whoops, our light is kind of blinking out here. Start to go along the barrel channel. 
So most of the time they fit well right off the machine, but sometimes they need adjustment. And if they do, I'll adjust them to uh, uh, you know, make sure the barrel fits. Because it's something that it can be a little tricky for customers to do. So it's just something we take care of and try to take care of our customers. Now in order to have a good, good fit, we have to control the stock and we have to control the, the barrels carefully. We have to control the dryness of the wood. We have to control the, the environment in the shop. Uh, the humidity, and so forth. So there's a lot of factors in order to, to try to accomplish just this one task. So it just kind of shows uh, an example of what all goes into this. So we're going to remove the barrel. I've shown this before, but here's a great way to remove the barrel. Hold the, the muzzle end, squeeze it, hold it firmly, just kind of cradle the breech end, and just kind of give, the, give it a little tap and it'll come out. That's a real good way to remove the barrel. I think I remember seeing that years and years ago from a video that Herschel House did where he showed the technique and used it ever since. So now we'll go through the stock. Um, there's one other item we do here on this colonial stock. The ramrod pipe inlet is kind of square here and it won't, the, the pipe won't quite fit, so we'll make a few little adjustments by hand on this. It's an area that I could program a little more carefully in the machine and get this cleaned up, but I haven't done it, so we just hit it with a chisel here for a moment, knock this corner off so the pipes will fit. Come on, baby. And then we'll hit, uh, hit the inlets with a little brush. Sometimes there's a little fuzz on the inlets. Cleans things up a little bit. Try to get some of the chips out of the inlets. Now this happens to be a stock that cut quite clean. Very nice. So there'll be, a, whoops, this darn light here giving me trouble. So there'll be a lot of uh, on, on some stocks, there's a little more hand cleanup. Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll look at the stock, make sure there aren't any obvious uh, defects, chips, etc. This stock looks pretty darn nice. Like I said, not all wood cut, cuts the same. Some cuts very well and some doesn't. A little area below the cheek piece that ends up being a little square. So we use a little file to blend it in. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to turn it over. Check this other side here. So it looks pretty good. I have some tool marks that are left here a little bit. We'll get the majority of it out. We don't sand these or finish these completely, you know, they still need a little hand work on them. So, uh, you know, I encourage you guys to, to look real carefully and, and, and finish these very carefully, sand them very well. Um, there's some tool marks usually near the breech on both, or excuse me, near the butt plate on both sides that need, uh, need some sanding to, to remove them. And uh, I see sometimes people don't get that area real well, so it's a nice thing to focus on. Uh, and an important way to focus on those is to use the light like the one that isn't cooperating with me, and uh, have it at a low angle relative to the stock. And that'll show, that'll, uh, that's basically raking light that'll show the surface uh, finish very, very well, and it'll, it'll expose any defects. And you want to have those exposed before you go to stain and finish the stock. Even though you're probably eager, take the time, sand it very well. You'll see the difference. Get in the lock inlet and try to brush it just a little bit here. Clean out a little of the fuzz. That'll do. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm happy with this stock. So now we need to get a uh, box lid. I got a box lid for it. And by box lid, I mean a sliding wood patch box lid. So this is one that I'd picked out for it. So we'll remove any fuzz from it.
And we oftentimes try to, or we, we all the time try to um, pick a lid that has similar grain structure. Uh, they're not always a perfect match, but we do the best we can with that. We want it to, uh, to look good on the, the finished rifle. So that'll work. So at this stage, it's ready to go over to the shipping department, and then it'll be paired with uh, all the other necessary parts and go out the door. So that's a, a summary of, uh, of our stocks here. I'm going to hang this and just set it aside and talk about a couple other things since we have the chance. See some parts over here that are in process. So here's some lock plates for our Ketlin lock that we use on our mountain rifle. So these are, are finished and ready to go. So these have all been CNC machined, which certainly makes a great quality product. Everything is in the right location, and there's no comparison to locks that are made by other methods. It's, um, here's a, some springs. These are all CNC machine, and this is a difficult part, as you can imagine. And the cycle time is fairly long on this, but it, it uh, makes a really quality product, and uh, you know we only uh, only want to uh, make quality products. We don't want to use the inferior methods, so this is what we choose. I have a whole container of these ready to go on rifles. Let's see what else here. Here's some springs for our our uh, Catlin lock. As you can imagine, one of the difficult things is me machining in this tight little bend in the corner. That can be pretty tricky. We go down to a 16th inch end mill to get in there. What else do we have here? We have some flies too. So these are in process, they're not completed. But these have come off the mill. Whole bunch of them there, hundreds of them there. You can imagine machining a tiny little part like this would have its challenges. But once you figure it out, it's not too bad to do. I won't tell you how we do it. If anybody can guess, let me know. <laughs> it might be kind of fun. Well, I think that's pretty good for today. Uh, just want to take a few moments and uh, share what we're working on and uh, let everybody know that we're working hard to get products out the door at our usual high quality and, and thanks everybody for their support and business and uh, that's about it so thank you <laughs>